Alright guys, I'm going to talk about a subject that I do think is quite important. I brought it up many a moon ago, which is why I'm reinstating it now. Um, it's basically called Travel Buddies. Now, a travel buddy isn't somebody who travels with you. Um, a travel buddy is somebody who is your point of contact, who is the person who is the point of contact for embassies, relatives, whoever. Because it's not all about family and friends. It's not all about people that you have direct contact with. A lot of the time, these people just need to be somebody you're associated with. They keep your emergency information. They know where you are all the time. Um, the reason for that is when you have a family emergency, maybe you don't talk to your family, the family can engage with them and you make it very clear that this is for emergencies only. But the other way around is, for example, you're in a road accident, you're arrested, you're unconscious, whatever. This person is the person that whoever locally can um, get hold of this person, they will put into action a recovery process. Um, now, I'll call it recovery because it could be that you need finances for medical. It could be um, you need a lawyer. It could be that you need the embassy um, assistance. It could be that you simply need some transportation because you've been robbed and left out in the wilderness. It doesn't really matter. The point being is we'll call it a recovery. Well, the travel buddy is that link. The travel buddy is somebody that may be completely independent of you and your family, friends, etc. Their only task is to make sure that they've got all the information on who to contact and also they're aware of where you are. It may seem that it's not important, it's not relevant, etc. Until something happens. Um, more than once, I've had um, expats that have basically died in the Philippines. And although they were estranged with their family, their family still had to deal with the situation of wondering what happened to their relative, wondering um, <laughs> how to bury them in some cases. Um, they were dealing with situations that come to them completely unknown. In the same way, I've had the same with medical emergencies and I've had the same with people being arrested as well. The reality is, if you just set up this very simple process, the people that you may not want to engage with because you feel a bit of an idiot, um, say for example, you tripped over, fell out in front of a bus, although not severely injured, um, struggle with a medical bill, they can contact your family, your family can then get, get in touch with the embassy or the embassy get in touch with them, whoever is on your list, and then you are then recovered. Um, one of the important things I want to say here relating to Philippines hospitals is they'll try and lock you into the hospital and keep you there. It's illegal in the Philippines. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware of that. It is illegal. When you get these people turning around and saying you're not allowed to leave the hospital until the bill's paid, and I know a lot of you guys are waiting on money a bit at a certain time of the month, and I do get frustrated with this, but you should be keeping an emergency budget anyway. I'm not saying how much my budget is because the whole point is as private, but I recommend having a minimum of 150,000 pesos per person. Um, now, the thing is, if you don't have it and you don't have these connections and you don't have people that are gonna assist, um, you will find that you'll struggle to get access to a hospital, you can die on the way to it, you can um, have things like they won't give you the same level of uh, care. For example, if you can't pay for ventilation equipment, don't assume they're just going to give it to you. They'll let you die. They'll just go, oh, die to natural causes. A lot of this stuff is not guaranteed they're going to assist it. Don't assume it's like Western countries. Don't assume it's like the NHS, which is just full of money that the taxpayers keep going. A lot of these places are private businesses. As such, as soon as you get to a point where they're worried about making a profit, they will ditch you. Bear that in mind. Be realistic on this stuff. Um, just make sure you have somebody that has your information. Make sure whoever's important to you, even if you hate them, because some people do, <laughs> that they know this guy is your middleman. This is the guy that makes sure everything's okay. So if they haven't heard from you in three months or whatever, they may actually want to contact this person and say, is he okay? 
and they go, yes, he's still wherever. And that might be the only engagement they want, because a lot of the time that buffer is there in the first place to stop people interfering in other people's lives. And I can understand that with some people. Um, but it's not I'm condoning or condemning it, because quite simply, this is more serious, which is quite simply making sure you're safe and alive. Um, so yeah, get a travel buddy. Make life easier for everybody. Thanks for watching.